Hi everyone, we are excited to have you here in today's fun-filled learning session at YOLO. Here is a quick look at how you can submit your work after the class. As a first step, go to live.yolo.com. You can use any browser to access this site. On this page, you will see a list of all our classes. Scroll down and you can see the Submit Your Work button. And then you will see a list of the classes that you last attended which could, for example, show the dance or craft or science experiment classes you've attended recently. Next, it will show you the list of children whose names are registered in this mobile number. Choose your name from this list to submit your work. For instance, if you are Satvik Kumar, choose that name. And then, choose the class for which you would like to make your submission. For example, if you've attended the New Year's Masquerade Party session, and you'd like to make the submission for this class, click on the Submit Your Work button below that. And then upload the photo you've taken. Choose the image from your phone and click Submit. You can scroll down and view all your past submissions and see how many of your friends or peers have liked your work. You can also see others' work and like their work to inspire your friends. If you want to showcase your work on social media, that too is very simple. Click on share, copy the link and post it on Instagram or Facebook or any other platform of your choice. Just a tiny reminder, your submission looks a lot better if you could click a photo in the landscape mode rather than the portrait mode. Do not forget to tag us at YOLO underscore app. I'm eagerly looking forward to all your submissions right after this class. Hi guys. Hello. Hi everybody. Hello. Hi, nice to see all my talented bunch of people in the class four. This is the last class of our oil pastels with, uh, yes, I see a few hi's and hello and everybody coming in. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the class four of botanicals with oil pastels. And I can't just believe that we have reached the end of this course and today is going to be the last class of this course. So we have had a lot of uh, learning about oil pastels. We created a lot of botanicals. We learned a lot about the unpopular, non-conventional flowers. We understood more about the parts of the flowers as well. So it has been a long journey with a lot of learning and I'm really excited for this class as well. So I hope all of you are doing good. I hope all of you follow the submission process that I shared with you. I see a lot of you making your submissions on time. You have been making your submissions consistently. You have been ending all the classes in this course and today is the last class of this course and make sure that you're making your submissions for this class as well so that when you make the submissions you receive your certificate for the course as well you know you remember i hope you remember this is the last class and everybody who has made the submissions for all the classes attended all the classes of the Schools are going to receive a beautiful certificate. Yes, so don't forget to make your submissions, and before that, don't forget to enjoy today's class. Okay, so I was just giving you a quick reminder about making your submissions so that you don't miss on to the certificates that you are going to receive. And I hope you all have followed what I said, and you're all excited for today's class. Yes, are you excited? Give me a thumb. Quickly give me a thumbs up if you're ready for the class and you want the fun activity to begin. I need some thumbs up coming in the chat section and then I'll quickly share the screen and we shall all get started. 
yes giving you 10 seconds to pour in your thumbs up come on pour in your thumbs up that yes ma'am we are ready with the materials and we just want the class to get started quickly give me a thumbs up okay i see lots of thumbs up coming in and all of you are so excited for this class it's now time to share the screen don't worry about the art materials you all know that I discuss the art materials so much in detail, isn't it? Let's get started now. And first, we are going to discuss the art materials. Okay. So number one, we need an A5 size white sheet. You all know that if you have an A4 size of white sheet, you can just cut it into half and you have an A5 size of white sheet. And again, if you don't have a white sheet, you can use any colored paper that you want to use. And if you don't have any of these, I'm sure you would be having some notebook at your place. You can just go grab a paper from your notebook and still take part in today's activity. Okay, so that's basic material that we need. That's an A5 size white paper. If you have a smaller size, that's fine as well. Okay. That's the first material. The second we need is a nice clean sharpened pencil. That's a must because we all know that we create some rough sketches of the botanicals. Yes, we create some rough sketches of these botanicals and hence we need a pencil. And next we need a black gel pen or a black ball pen or a black sketch pen. Okay. So this is completely optional in this class. If you have a black sketch pen or a black ball pen or a black gel pen, just go grab those. And if you don't have any of it, that's totally fine as well. You can just skip this art material, this particular art material. Fourth, we need earbuds. So these are cotton earbuds that I have. And you all know that we use these earbuds for smudging and blending the colors. And the fifth, we need these. Oil if you see, I don't have too many shades this time. We have just basic shades over here. We have a yellow oil pastel, a brown oil pastel, dark green, light green, and white. Okay, so these are pretty much the basic shades. The, I am just going to repeat the shades again for you. That's yellow, brown, light green, dark green. These are the basic colors that we need. And if you all remember, as said, if you don't have oil pastels, you need not worry. You can just carry out the same process or try to carry out the same process with wax crayons or plastic crayons or even color pencils if you want. But since this is typically an oil pastel course, it would be good if you have oil pastels with you. Okay. So that's what we need. These are okay so i hope you have all of these materials you have some clue substitutes of the materials either and you all remember this thing right i hope you all remember that we do not reveal the name of that botanical illustration till the end of this class so we are going to play the same thing again in this class as well we are not going to reveal the name of the flower before we are just done with the illustration. Once the illustration is complete, let's see if anybody is able to guess the name of the flower. So if you feel that you know the name of the flower, just type it in the chat section once it is done or while we are drawing it. And yeah, just let's see if anybody could guess it. But of course, if nobody could guess that, we would be... Uh, discussing the name of the flower, sharing the name of the flower and some fun facts about it as well. Okay, so now this time it would be a little different from our previous classes. So just make sure that you're observing everything carefully and then proceeding. Okay, so first thing to be done here is we need to create a rough sketch, right? And for the rough sketch, we need a pencil. So I'm just taking this pencil over here and we are going to draw something, okay? Slightly towards the center, just roughly towards the center, a little towards the left side. I draw a circle. I start by draw, drawing a tiny circle. So all of you can just draw a tiny circle. Just draw a tiny circle on the sheet. Leave some gap on the top 
side as well. Okay, just zooming in a little for you. Okay, now inside this circle, we are just going to make some more tiny circles. This tiny circle over here, and we all know what is this called as. Yes, we know this is called as the. Come on, come on, come on. What is this called as? The center part of the flower which has some seeds. Which is it called? What is it called as? Yes, that's the pollens that we are drawing. So this a uh, circle, and inside the circle we draw some tiny circles and fill it up with tiny circles again. Okay. So this is again a rough sketch. So you need not be entirely perfect with it. And now. We're just going to draw some more pollen grains, or uh, let us start with the petals itself. So I'm just going to draw a petal, which is something like this. I'm quickly repeating it for you. This is the same kind of petal that we did in the earlier class. That one petal, simple. And just on the top side, you can just give two curved lines as well. Okay, so just giving two curved lines on the top. Again, drawing another petal next to it, and drawing some more petals. Again, this time, make sure that your flower is not having more than five petals. Okay, and not having more than five petals this time. And also, if you see, I'm not creating a perfect edge to the petals. I'm not creating a perfect edge, but I'm just creating these rough lines to make it look a little more realistic. You can do the same as well. Just give five petals to your flower and draw some curved lines at the edge. Just draw some curved lines at the edge. Quickly repeat a little bit from here. We draw a petal and we give some curved lines at the top area. So you spot this top area. I'm just drawing some curved lines at the top area. And also, if you see, I'm not giving perfect edges to the petal. I'm just giving some rough edges. You can do the same as well. Okay, just done with the petal. So this is the flower. Again, as I said, it's okay if you're not able to draw the exact same thing, but just make sure that your flower is having only five petals. Okay. And now I'm just going to draw some more pollen grains. And this time I'm going to create it a little uplift. So carefully observe this first. Okay. I'm going to draw these pollen grains now. So I draw a curved line and I draw an oval. And inside the oval, I again draw a horizontal tiny line. You could just spot this particular pollen grain. So that's a straight line, and then I give it an oval and I draw a horizontal line inside. So I'm going to draw a few more, not too large, not too small, but just roughly drawing some pollen grains. All of you now can draw some golden greens along with me. Draw a curved line and draw a tiny oval above it. Okay, so that the golden greens that we are creating, you can be rough at it. That's totally fine. Just creating your golden. I've surrounded the center circle with some pollen grains over here. You need not add too much of it, but just a little bit would be fine. Okay. Okay. And now, if you see, we have what we have in front of us is a flower, and these are some pollen grains and. The center part again has some pollen grains. So the center part has the pollen grains, and since this is the front view, the top view of the flower, the center part of the pollen grains have a flat view, and the side pollen grains 
look a little uplifted okay so that's the reason we have surrounded the center part with some more folded grain to make it look a little angular a little bit from a different view so we have a first flower ready that is the only flower that we want to draw in this particular illustration so now we are going to go ahead and add a stem so just add a stem now Stem, a double stem over here. So now all of you just carefully keep your pencils down and observe this process. Okay. If you see the second side of the stem, I'm going to create a additional stem to it. So could you spot this particular stem? So first, I'm going to draw a stem. So I first draw a straight curved line as a stem. This is the first curved line. Then I draw another line parallel to it, but I start from the top, then I discontinue the line. I stop somewhere at the middle, and then I draw an extended stem to it. So this particular thing looks like a alphabet V to you. And then we draw another parallel line and continue the main stem that we have okay so that's the main stem that we have over here and we have just added another stem we are adding some leaves and if you could see the leaves of this particular flower are a little elongated okay so draw longer leaves this time because this particular flower has longer leaves okay so draw longer leaves but thinner ones and now just at the end of the second additional stem that we have added we are going to draw a bud over this i hope you all know what is a bud by now it is nothing but the bud blooms into a flower so we are going to draw a bud first draw these two leaves and then we add two more leaves towards the inner portion. Okay, so here's a quick recap for you. We extend the stem with two curved lines on each side, and then we join these ends. And inside this area now, we again add two more tiny leaves as well. And then we just draw a bud that is the bud i've just created a simple inverted u over here and that's the bud that we have created so now just to the stem we can add some more leaves and i've just added two more leaves to the stem and now if you have a little bit of more space at the other side you can just add one more bud as well but in case you're not having space at the other side you can just give leaves and end it there but since i have a lot of space on the other side i'm going to just add another bud over there so this particular portion that we have drawn over here is called as a bud and this bud is into a flower okay we have just created another bud on the other side by just the similar thing it looks like this bud is going to soon bloom into a flower. Okay, so adding some leaves as well again. Okay, so I hope the rough sketches are ready in front of you now. So that's the rough sketch. It's fine if it's not exactly the same as mine. And it's now time to add some colors. And just before that, if you want, as I said, the use of black sketch pen or a black gel pen is completely optional. So if you're not using the black sketch pen or a ball pen or an ink pen, you can just skip this process. But now just with a black sketch pen, I'm going to go ahead and just outline these tiny pollen grains that I've drawn. Just the side pollen grains, I'm just going to outline those. Not the inner 
portion, not the flower, nothing. I'm not going to outline everything. I'm just going to outline these pollen grains. Nothing else. Just the pollen grains that you need to outline. So, just the pollen grains and that to the side ones only. So, I'm just giving an outline, a quick outline to the pollen grains. Just giving a quick outline to the pollen grains. And then we will be ready to add in some colors. So just adding some pollen grains at the side. Just covering it with this black ink pen over here. Don't worry. As I said, if you're not using black pens, you can just completely skip this process. Okay. Awesome. So now we have the illustration ready in front of us to be colored and it's time to take your oil pastels now. So now, again, for the first time, I want all of you all to observe the process, okay? I know by now you have just mastered this technique of oil pastels, but since this is a different flower, this is a new flower, I want all of you to just patiently observe the process first and then when I repeat it, you all can create it along with me. Okay, so just for the first time, I request all of you all to please observe this and then make it for yourself. Okay, so number one, we take a brown crayon, a brown oil pastel. So zoom in a little for you. Okay, and now I'm just going to give an outline to the petal. Just at the edges, just at the edges of the petals and the curved lines that we have drawn on top. So this is one petal. Consider this to be one petal. And look how I've added the brown crayon, the layer of brown color over here. Just the sides and the edges that I've added the brown color. Okay, not too dark, not too light, just a thin layer. And then we just blend it nicely to give a smooth look. Okay, just blend it nicely in tiny circular motions and it will give you a smooth look. Just the way it is over here. So just going to blend it nicely. Okay, seems to be perfect. And now inside the petal, we are going to add the yellow color. Any shade of yellow that you have, it would be totally fine. So I'm just going ahead and adding the yellow oil pixel. Adding the yellow color inside the petal. So we start by adding color to the petal from brown and then we add some yellow to it. If you are not using a black sketch pen just make sure that you're not coloring inside the pollen green okay you need not color inside the pollen green do not color inside the pollen green and lastly you need to just blend in the yellow color as well just with your fingers okay so now exactly the similar process we are going to carry out for all the other petals also you all can just start along with me now. We start by brown. We add a good thin layer at the edges and the sides of the petal. Just a smooth layer, not too thick. Just not too thick, light outline to the petal. And then just blending it nicely with the earbud. Blend it nicely with the earbuds so that it gives you a smooth look. And once done, we are going to add this yellow color, this yellow oil pastel inside it. Nicely adding the yellow oil pastel. So this seems to be pretty easy as compared to the earlier classes. But it's just because of the earlier classes and the techniques that we learned, that this seems to be easier to us. 
isn't it? So again, just going to follow the similar process for the other flowers, the other petals, I mean, the other petal. So in case you have missed it, you can just observe it again on your screen. I'm giving an outline with the brown crayon, the brown oil pastels. I blend it well with the earbuds to give it a smooth look. And then I will add a layer of yellow inside the petal. A lot of you have been asking me that why do we just use these earbuds to blend in? I mean, we can still, you know, add color without blending it, isn't it? I agree. I agree that we can add the color directly without blending in or without using the earbuds. But the thing with earbuds is that it gives you a smoother look. It gives your artwork a smooth finish, a nice finish, a clean finish. And that's the reason when you always use it's the best to blend your colors nicely with paper. Okay, so that's the reason I always prefer blending it nicely with the paper to give it a nice smooth finished look. That's what I'm doing over here again to the second last petal I'm on. Then adding some yellow color. And again, a quick reminder do not add color to the pollen green. Do not add color to the pollen green, just the petals that we need to color. Okay, so I'm going to the last petal now. And I don't want any of you to hurry or rush into the process. I know you must have just understood the technique by now, but it's not necessary that you have to be with me during the class. It's okay if you're just a step behind or if you're just a step ahead. You need not rush the process in any manner. Just relax and just be where you are, okay? Even if you have not completed the entire illustration, I'm sure you're going to complete it after the class ends and you can still make your submission. But make sure that you're not hurrying the process, okay? I'm just adding the yellow color inside the petal now. Okay, there we go. If you see, the flower looks pretty complete to me. We have added the petals, we have added color to the petals, and now just to the center portion, you can add a layer of brown first. I understand we drew pollens inside it, but that was for your understanding. So first we are going to give a layer of brown inside, and then just dab your yellow oil pastel onto it. Just dab your yellow oil pastel, and it will just end up creating just dab it inside and that will be perfect. Okay. So you're done with the flower and the similar technique now. The similar technique that we followed for the petal that is going to create the similar kind of an effect to the two buds that we have drawn. In case you have drawn one bud, just add color to that one bud and then we move ahead. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly add color to the buds now. Just a similar technique. I add a little bit of portion of this brown color at the top side of the bud. Then I blend it nicely. I blend it well to give it a smooth finish. Blending it nice and well. And then I'm just going to fill it up with this yellow color, the yellow oil paste. Okay, so similar technique to the other buds as well. Okay, so since the bud is eventually going to bloom into a flower, it kind of has the same color tone, the same color scheme like the flower as well. Okay. So that's the reason we are using the same technique and the same colors as well in the bud. Just adding some colors. Okay. There we go. 
So I've just added colors to the two bar. And now it's time to paint or just add colors to the stem and the leaves. So again, for the stem and the leaves, there's a little bit of difference in this particular illustration. So we start by dark green. We start by dark green and we start by adding two, adding color at one side of the stem. So just one side of the stem, I add green. And also the stem that we have extended towards the bud, we are going to add dark green. Just to the leaves as well, just a thin layer of dark green. Okay, so it will be completely at it, that's totally fine, but just give a thin layer of dark green to the stem and near the bud, just below the bud that we have these leaves. We are going to add a little bit of dark green. Then take the light green and then just next to it, we add this light green. So this is again a similar technique that we have been following in the previous classes as well. So I'm just carrying out the similar process. I'm giving it a light shading just to the leaves, just below the bud. Filling it up nicely and cleanly. Do not move out of your rough sketches. Just stay within your sketches. And there we go. So I'm just done with one part of it. Now onto the other part. I'm not going to, you know, repeat this process too much because the stem is pretty easy and this is the same stem that we have been doing since long. So just the stem and the lower portion of the bud. We are going to follow the similar technique of using dark green and light green for shading. And just as we are done, we move to the leaves. Okay, so don't worry. But the leaves, as I said, is a little different. I would be repeating it for you. But let's start with the leaves now. So everybody, I hope you are paying careful attention on your screen because the leaves would be a little different this time. So carefully observe this. I start by adding a layer of dark green first to the lower portion. So now everybody just add a quick layer of thin light or a thin dark green to the leaves. Just start with one leaf and just add a thin layer of dark green on the lower portion of the leaf. Everybody quickly add a thin layer of dark green to one side of the leaf. Okay, and then add a layer of light green above it. Create a layer of light green above this and now you all can also add this light green along with me. Add a layer of light green, not to the entire leaf. And then we need to add this yellow, a little bit of yellow. A thin layer of yellow above the light green. And then we are just going to top it up with dark green. Okay, so just a little bit of yellow was what the difference is about. We just need to add a layer of yellow. And we have our first leaf set. Okay, so now exactly the similar process in the other leaves as well. Let's begin with the other leaves. Let's start by adding color to the other leaves. So we start with dark green. We start with dark green, then we add a thin layer of light green, and then a little bit of yellow, and then again dark green. So this time we have used four colors in the leaf and created this shaded look. So, till the time we are all coloring the leaf, you can just carefully listen to this particular information that. The reason that we added yellow to the leaves this time is because this particular flower has a leaf which is typically very bright in 
in its typical sense it is naturally very bright the leaves of this particular flower are very bright so in order to make anything bright then it is about leaves you can always add a tinge of yellow or a little bit of yellow to that particular portion to make it bright okay so that's the reason i have added a tinge of yellow a dash of yellow as we said a little bit of yellow to every leaf that we are coloring over here so that they look a little more brighter and we can just end up making it look a little more realistic okay so just following the similar technique everywhere for all the leaves i'm just creating the same thing on all the leaves together so adding yellow to one to the next leaf and then to the other sides as well again a quick reminder you need not hurry the process you need not rush the process you can just have your own pace you can have your own speed you need not rush the process so i'm just done by the leaf and it's okay if you haven't completed it by now you can i'm sure you know a, just a little bit of it would be left if in case you haven't finished it but you need not rush the process but now for me the illustration is all completed and it's now time to reveal the name of this flower so i don't think by so far anybody has guessed the name of the flower mm, yes nobody has guessed the name of the flower yet so it's time that we reveal the name of the flower this time i'm not going to uh, reveal it in the regular sense i'm going to write the name of this flower just below this artwork so let's see if anybody could still guesses guess it by its initials so let us get started so everybody i'm just revealing the name of the flower so all eyes on the screen the name of this flower starts from b it starts from b the first alphabet the initial of this star is a b i just don't see any guesses coming in so we further okay we are just revealing the name of star guys okay Okay, so we have the name of the flower coming in, and it's here. It's here. So the name of the flower is buttercup. I repeat, it's buttercup. I have just written it down over here. So this is a flower which is buttercup. The peculiarity or the fun fact about this flower, it has lots of pollen grains. So it has lots of pollen grains into the flower. and this is typically bright even the flower itself and the leaves of this particular flower are totally bright and that was our illustration for today that was the end of this course as well so that was the illustration it's a buttercup flower and if you could spot this time we just revisited all the techniques that we have learned we started with shading smudging we understood the different parts of the flower as well and we have included majorly all of these in today's illustration we created the flowers along with the pollen along with the buds as well isn't it and the name of this flower was buttercup and that was the illustration for today and i hope all of you all just enjoyed this class you all enjoyed the course in particular and i hope that you're going to take a lot of learning lots of learnings from this particular course and it was a fun time for me as well to conduct this course for you and this was the first time that i you know just created or started a course with something realistic something realistic uh, about nature about botanicals and the response from 
awesome. You guys have been phenomenal. So I'm going to quickly thank you guys for making our submissions on time and being so 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 talented. Yes, this was the last class. A quick reminder: please do make your submissions. You'll get a certificate since this course is ending. So I hope you had fun during all the classes during this particular course. And I'll be back with yet another power pack course. Till then, I want all of you to stay creative. You know, take part in the Yolo classes, all the hobby classes, make submissions for all the classes. Get too many certificates, and I'll see you super duper soon. I promise to come back with yet another course. So till then, please take care of your. and as i said please stay creative okay i'll see you super duper soon i promise to come back again and super duper soon as well okay i'll see you soon bye bye take care hi everyone we are excited to have you here in today's fun fill learning session at yolo here is a quick look at how you can submit your work after the class as a first step Go to live.yolo.com. You can use any browser to access this site. On this page, you will see a list of all our classes. Scroll down, and you can see the "Submit Your Work" button. And then you will see a list of the classes that you've at last attended, which could, for example, show the dance or craft or science experiment classes you've attended recently. Next. it will show you the list of children whose names are registered in this mobile number choose your name from this list to submit your work for instance if you are satvik kumar choose that name and then choose the class for which you would like to make your submission for example if you've attended the new year's masquerade party session and you'd like to make the submission for this class click on the submit your work button below that and then Upload the photo you've taken. Choose the image from your phone and click submit. You can scroll down and view all your past submissions and see how many of your friends or peers have liked your work. You can also see others' work and like their work to inspire your friends. If you want to showcase your work on social media, that too is very simple. Click on share, copy the link and post it on Instagram or Facebook or any other platform of your choice just a tiny reminder your submission looks a lot better if you could click a photo in the landscape mode rather than the portrait mode do not forget to tag us at yolo_app i'm eagerly looking forward to all your submission 